Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a substitute mic, which picks up all the sounds of the internal computer. I apologize ahead of time. Anyway, now we're going to deal with betrayal, lies, oh my goodness, heartbreak, fear, the whole nine yards. And this is a story of when Peter, I mean, when Jesus got, uh, was getting ready to, um, it was at the Last Supper, let's just say it like that. And Jesus, uh, they sing a hymn, the disciples and Jesus sing a hymn. Verse 31, then saith Jesus unto them, now this is Matthew 26, 31. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night, before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called the Gethsemane. I'm going to stop there. Because the main thing I wanted you to hear Jesus already knew which ones were going to betray him, when and how. And you know what else, what else he knows? He knows when you and I will have that moment of betrayal. Do you hear what I'm saying? So my question to you is, have you or will you betray him? And the reason I ask you that is because when you look at life and the challenges it brings there is a thing we refer to as peer pressure oh yeah now some of you young people this is for all of you so don't go anywhere you old folks like me for you, some of you young people you get around your friends and you know you may have told them that you are trying to walk with Jesus and all that but your friends are going to look at you and start calling you a party poop. I'm just making silly terms. They're going to start making fun of you. Oh, they don't drink anymore. Boy, you sure have become a dud since you accepted Jesus. What do you keep hanging out with us for? You're not going to do what we want to do. And you know, after a while, oh, and some of them will say things like this. Oh, I love this one. Oh, now you think you're better than us holier than thou Ooh, that stabs deep doesn't it yeah you know it does and it hurts your feelings and you don't want to be rejected by your crew but let me tell you this if you're not careful and you keep hanging and hanging before you know it you give in oh give me that cigarette I don't think I'm better than you give me that drink and whoop I mean, you just start going for everything that you used to do in order for them to get off your back. That comes from fear, fear of rejection. All right. Now, some of you hopefully have enough backbone not to give in, or you are prayed up enough not to give in, and hopefully you're not hanging around to put yourself in a position to give in. Okay, some of you middle-aged folks, let's say between 30 and 50, you're on your jobs, you've been on your jobs for years. You might even be in your 20s. You got a job, and you want to keep your job. And you start getting a little ridicule. They knew you when you were cussing and telling dirty jokes and laughing at dirty jokes and all kind of good stuff. And all of a sudden now, you're trying to walk the straight and narrow. Boring. I mean, what fun can you be when you can't tell dirty jokes? What fun are you when you can't cuss like the best of us? What fun 
funny you when you can't chuck, 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 chuck a lark when we're at the bar. And what fun of you when we can't get it on. Yeah. So you find yourself feeling like the odd man out. And that doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. Now, what you should be doing is hanging with the saints. But since you're hanging with the ain'ts, you're going to have some issues. And you have to make some choices. And some of those choices are going to be very difficult to make. I'm going to leave you there. You sit in that scenario in your mind and see how, if you know how that's going to play out. Are you going to be another one that betrays Jesus Christ when the nitty gritty hits the fan? I ask you. Search yourself, baby. All right. Now, for you seniors, you old folk like me, some of you have or maybe may have gotten disillusioned a little by the ways of God because things have happened or he has allowed some things to happen and you have become offended because of him and your offense is in the fact that you feel like God should not have allowed the end of the play you have that he should not have allowed the curtains to come down at that moment allowing somebody to die allowing somebody to lose allowing you to get sick whatever the case may be you have become offended in him and internally emotionally you are beginning to betray him because you are you are resentful. I mean, we all get angry at God and frustrated. That's part of relationship. But in your case, you're getting resentful and bitter. And you're starting to think, well, what the heck is the use in trying to, to continue with this relationship? After all, God stabbed me in the back. Look what he let happen. He just screwed me, left me out hanging, threw me under the bus. I mean, and your list goes on and on because you know the older we get, the more challenging things can get in the physical realm when it comes to health, money, and other kind of stuff. We won't go into that. Boom, boom. But, slide on past that. The bottom line is you know how you feel. Now, are you going to betray him and walk away? and act like you never knew him or his people or are you going to sit down and have a long heart to heart chat with him with the box of Kleenex and let him know honestly how you felt about what went down but while you're expressing yourself asking him in the meantime to keep you to sustain you to fortify you, strengthen you on the inner man until this thing passes over. To strengthen your faith, help you get better understanding of yourself and of what's going on and why. How are you going to respond to this trial? I just want you to sit in that scenario and you think about that while you're either laying in the hospital or you're recovering from a stroke or a heart attack or you or your wife has left you for another lover or you're a pastor and your church is falling apart because you can hardly be there because of your health and you refuse to turn it over because that, that'd be your church. No. But ask God to help you, to help you through this. We are all human. We all have issues. But what are you going to do with those issues? And what are you going to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ and our Father in Heaven through the power of His Holy Spirit 
when all hell is breaking loose in your life? Are you going to betray him as well? And I leave you with that question. Amen.